and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DiTulio. And I'm Kristen Clock. Today's Sports Zone kicks off its 11th season in the Brick City. You know, Kristen, last year the RIT women's hockey team stole the spotlight as they captured the program's first national championship, then announced they were moving up to Division I. With a new era in women's sports upon us, Sports Zone went behind the scenes with Scott McDonald's group to document their journey through preseason, culminating with their highly anticipated Division I debut. Let's go, let's go. Sprint it, sprint it, sprint it, sprint it. Come on, Carly, get here, get here, get here. What we're doing for competition day is we have a bunch of different, like, they're like strongman competitions. Go. We throw some weights around, do some lunges, throw the medicine ball down the track. We do that as, as a team building thing and as a strengthening thing. Uh oh, Reed's got power. As good as they were when they won the national title last year, they weren't even close to knowing what it's like to prepare on a daily basis for, for a Division I atmosphere. So we had, we had some strong words from time to time on, on our intensity level, our compete level. And you know, to their credit, they responded really, really well. Good. Yeah, it's right about a minute a person. So this is like a minute of sprint shift. From when we were a D3 team, workouts are very different. Um, for one, we have a trainer, so we have Tim, and we're not just working out on our own. And two, everything is upped. Weights that we lift are completely higher than what we did. The amount of running we do is higher, and just overall intensity is higher, too. 807. Woo! They didn't understand how hard they could push. Yeah. You know, without, you know, some of them thought they were just gonna, they were just gonna die those first couple weeks. But they understood after that. Okay, I can push this hard, I can push this hard, and, and I'm going to be fine. Go, T! Go, T! I would say we are prepared because we have worked very hard, and everyone um, has done what they need to do in the off season. We're excited and we're ready to do the best we can do. Go, guys. Go, Colby! You won the national title in Division Three at about 75% of your real strength. Now you've grown from there. Keep pushing the bar higher. If you keep pushing the bar higher, we're going to do great. One, two, three, Tigers! Pretty much it's just a meet and greet with the team. So all our fans, the community, students, they get to come out, get to meet us right before a season, before a game tomorrow, and just kind of meet us before the season starts. I really like that the community is so involved in the team, and I think it's really nice to see all the fans come out and support us today. We have this event now, the meet and greet, and then later on we have a three-hour practice. We're kind of looking forward to it because we've been doing just so many captain's practices and stuff, so it's kind of good for us to finally have a real practice. Here we go! Skate! Skate! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Quick, quicker, quicker, quicker! On it, on it! We need to learn to use better intensity now, keep our tempo up the whole time, uh, and overall just be so competitive now. That's what we really need. Okay, and that's, that's the next level that we have to get to, is just the sheer competitiveness, every shift, every second, the whole time. All right, so get used to passing it harder and get used to releasing it quicker. Any questions? Good. Hold your stick tight. Skate now, skate, 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 skate. Other way, other way. Why are you all nervous and jittery? Settle down. Settle down. Harder, harder, harder. Come here, all of you, down here. Get on the line. I want to put some pressure on the girls to get them used to, you know, the more pressure that they're going to have at the Division I level. Um, I thought we should have been sharper, um, a little bit more focused, especially the first practice. We've been on the ice practicing, somewhat practicing. And already, there's pucks everywhere. So we'll get warmed up by just skating. We'll take the pucks out of the equation so you guys can get into it. Orange and white, go, down and back. And we've had a numerous sessions of just working on skill stuff, you know, passing and receiving. And uh, so I, that was the last thing I expected to be off today. Half you already look tired. Line up on the opposite sides now, do the same drill. Let's actually make a pass this time. I wanted more tempo, and that was really the only thing. There's nothing new that we're learning that's you know, mind-blowingly different at the Division I level. It's just 
trying to enforce the tempo and the speed is going to be different. You know, the time and space will be different. Um, and just the execution uh, of plays has to be a lot better now. Catch the pass! I don't think we're a Division One team right now. We haven't played a game yet. And uh, until we get that first game under our belt, then we're, we're Division Three. So this is something that it'll be great for us, you know, um, to see this on film of what we're up against. Uh, this is from Saturday afternoon. They're playing Stony Creek. It's a little nerve-wracking to play Mercyhurst next weekend just because, you know, they are known for, like, to be a really good team. Um, but, you know, we just have to work hard, and I think, you know, all the training that we've done and, um, and all the practicing and everything, I think we're ready, and um, it should be a good game. Close the gap on them. That's how you slow teams down is you close gaps on them. I think we're getting closer to that level every practice, so I think Mercyhurst will be a really good check-in point to see where we are and what we still need to do. It's great for us to play the upper echelon Division One teams because it'll give us a very clear idea sure. of wh year. what the level really is. They're the cream of the crop of the CHA conference, and if we want to win a championship in this league, then we have to play through them. You know, you have to be able to beat them all the time. Not, not one out of four games. It's got to be all the time. Let's get up in their face. Let's not blink. Let's just can pound them into the boards. Take a couple shots at them. All right, and let them know that they're in for a game this weekend. Okay. Good? All right. I was really nervous last night, but I think I'm a little flushed out now. I'm ready to go. Everyone in the locker room seems to be like excited and like trying to get all the nerves out. It's going to be high tempo, lots of contact. Um, we just have to be aggressive on the puck and make sure we get pucks to the net to vary on the opportunities that we get. You will not back down. You will not back away. If they want to get into it, then you get right up in their face and get into it with them. Okay? Enjoy the moment. Enjoy everything. Welcome to D1 Hockey. Now let's welcome Mercer Star Rink now. Show them what we're about. Okay? At the end of the day, they're going to be talking about us. All right? Let's have some fun out here tonight. Okay? Good, bad, and the ugly, we do it together, okay? Yeah. Keep your heads on straight, you go together the whole time, all right? Let's go, have some fun, all right? A lot of fun. Right off the bat. That kid's into this game. At least we've still got a lot of hockey to play. Now let's see what kind of bite we really have now, okay? How do you respond to this? Another goal, 2 nothing, and we are 18 seconds into this game. Let's go, Orange. Wow. The first two goals were a major wake-up call, especially for me. Um, I was on the ice for the two goals, and the first one, it was just like, wow, what just happened? And then, you know, we got ready, and we tried. We were like, okay, we're not going to let this happen again. And it was like, wow, it happened again. All right, let's just chip away, okay? Everybody settle down now, relaxed. First period, that, was, that wasn't our team. You know, that was uh, clearly, I thought, nerves were, were, were involved. First period is in the books for the RIT Tigers. Mercyhurst comes out. They got a 4 nothing lead after one. Take the first 20 seconds out, and honest to God, it's a good game. So forget the first period. Start. This is from scratch now. It is 0-0 for the period. Let's see the period. And you just, we got to learn how to chip away and start coming back now. Okay, that's the lesson for the next 20. Okay? Now let's see what we're made of. Okay, come out and let's play. You know, the Fragon and Fragon and the Tigers have their first goal at the Division I level. That's it, girls. That's it. Let's get going now, okay? Chip away. And there's a goal. The Tigers, our first power play goal at the Division I level. And what do you know? It's another freshman, Katie Hubert, with the goal. Number 22, it's 6-2. to two. That's a 2-2 two -two period right there with a top 10 Division I team. 2-2. Two -two. 20 minutes, man. Let's make a statement here that we're not going to give up no matter what the, what, whatever the scoreboard says, we're not giving up here. Set the tone now, okay? All right, let's go. Come on. Come on. Brown in front, and Peril. Not able to get to it before the goaltender, Amanda McKella. The IT Tigers tonight. First game, D1 level for the women. 
Gonna come up on the on the short end, but uh, the way they played in the second and the third, they played them even the second and the third after falling behind four nothing in the first. Keep your heads up. I certainly wouldn't think that that's not an embarrassing loss by any means. The uh, your first game against a top ten team. I thought we had a good showing, especially in the last two periods. I think you would rather play that game and lose rather than play a 10-0 game and win. Right or wrong, you know? Up top says Carly. Carly with her first, okay? And then uh, also Katie with her first one, okay? Congratulations. Awesome. Overall, I was actually pleased how we finished. Give us about five, six more games to get that pace down, and then we'll see, you know, by Thanksgiving time. I think then you're truly a D1 team when you have a number of games under your belt. Don't forget that RIT Sports Zone is your home for women's hockey this season. Our next broadcast comes up on Saturday, November 10th, when the Tigers host Syracuse at Ritter Arena. Coverage begins at 2 o'clock. You can find our complete women's hockey broadcast schedule right now on our website, ritsz.com. Welcome back to Sports Zone. The puck is ready to drop on a new season for the RIT men's hockey team. Melissa Bromley caught up with the head coach of the Tigers for a preview. I'm here with head coach Wayne Wilson who begins his 15th season here at RIT. Coach, I think one of the biggest questions coming into this season is going to be who is going to replace Shane Matalora and Nat. Well, it's a good question, but uh, thankfully we have what we think are two good returning goalies um, and uh, Jordan Ruby and Josh Watson, and we have a newcomer, uh, Ken McLean, here as well. We'll let the, the two upperclassmen battle it out and see how they do at the beginning of the year before we make a decision whether we're going to go with one or we may go with two as well. Fans chanting RIT. Burke halting it. Blast and a goal! And the Tigers have done it! Oh! Shots on the team. On top of that, you lost a big class last year. What has the team been doing to prepare to fill those voids? Well, you know, there's a lot. Of team chemistry is very important, I think, to any team. You have to have a certain amount of talent, but uh, chemistry is a part of it. So when we're trying to get eight new guys uh, acclimated to RIT, uh, not only the, uh, the hockey part, but also just the schooling part, it takes some time. So I think we're going to have to go through some games and whether it be great wins or, or tough losses, uh, I think teams start to bond uh, off of those situations and you, and you grow from them. So it's going to take a little bit of time at the beginning of the year, but I think once we get going, uh, hopefully the team will bond in a very positive manner. After back-to-back -back losses in the conference championship game, do you feel that the upperclassmen have come back with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder? Um, yeah, maybe a little bit of a chip. You know, it's difficult because you, you, you work so hard and when you get into those single game eliminations and they're over and done with, that's, you have to sit on it all year long again. So uh, those are tough losses. Uh, I think you use them for fuel, for fire. I think it also it gets everyone's attention at the start of the year that it is a lot of hard work throughout the year and, and you've got to be able to close at the end of the year and that's what we're going to be working towards is just getting better every game and then uh, getting to that moment trying to be at our best when it really matters. Can you talk to us a bit about the AHA coaches poll about the team finishing in fourth this season? Well we're picked for fourth and, and that's fine. Uh, someone pointed out every time we get picked other than first we end up winning the league so maybe that's a a good thing but uh, you know we did lose a lot of people so there's a lot of question marks and uh, I think it's up to ourselves now to really kind of prove ourselves uh, that we're better than that and uh, this is I, I think just motivation I think if you're pick number one it's certainly an honor but you've got to then back it up and maybe not as much of a target on our back this year as there has been in the past. My thanks to head coach Wayne Wilson. The Tigers open up their season with a pair of games in Ann Arbor against Michigan on October 11th and 12th. For RIT Sports Zone, I'm Melissa Bromley. The Tigers' first home game comes up on Saturday, October 20th at the Blue Cross Arena against Penn State. Our coverage begins that night with RIT Sports Zone pregame live at 7 o'clock on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet Channel 26 and 1026 HD.
Unless you're a track enthusiast, you probably have never heard of race walking. Now, it's harder than it sounds, and it's different from running than that one foot must appear in contact with the ground at all times. Now, this past summer, Sports Zone's Kristen Clock caught up with an RIT senior who's become one of the best racers in the nation and now has her sights set on a trip to Rio in 2016. Rachel Zoyhovsky didn't start race walking until high school, but it didn't take long for her to become a natural. I started race walking uh, in high school because I was a downhill ski racer and I wanted to stay in shape for skiing. And I had never run track before, I'd never pursued a running career. And I just kind of saw a bunch of girls doing it out on the track one day and I thought, oh, that looks like fun, maybe I'll give it a shot. So some of the older girls took me out and they showed me the rules and what I had to do to stay within proper form and I just kind of picked it up naturally and went from there. Was there a moment when you realized like, oh, I'm pretty good at this? <laughs> Actually, it was my very first race. My very first race, I uh, ended up getting the freshman record and uh, my coach was pulled me aside after the race and said, oh, you got a knack for this. We're going to make you do this for the rest of the season. So I didn't know any better, so I said, okay, we'll, we'll do this. Rachel continued to blossom when she arrived at RIT. She improved so much that last year her coaches decided she should skip her junior season to focus on her ultimate goal. It was early last year. My coach here, Dave Worth and Dave Stevens, and I decided that I would redshirt this entire cross-country and track season to try and qualify for the U.S. Olympic trials. Um, and since then, I've gotten my other coach. I have a private coach for race walking, and his name's Tim Seaman. And uh, he's based out of California. So between Tim Seaman, Coach Worth, and Coach Stevens, the three of them have all kind of worked together to create a training schedule for me for this past year. So it's a combination of race walking and running. Um, it's supposed to propel me in the direction of qualifying for the U.S. Olympic trials, which it successfully has, while at the same time keeping me in shape so that when I return to running, I'll still have a solid base to go back to. Rachel qualified for the U.S. Olympic trials in July and got a taste of what it's like to compete against the top athletes in the country. What will you gain from this experience? The opportunity to race at the Olympic trials is invaluable. Like, there's races all around the country, but there's no single race except for the Olympic trials where you know every top athlete in the country is there at the same time competing. It's a stressful situation so being able to go to the Olympic trials now so I know what to expect in the future when I have a greater chance of qualifying for the Olympics, um, that's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to take this in so I can get used to it and when the next Olympic trials rolls around I'll be relaxed and ready to go. Although her time wasn't fast enough to qualify for the London Games, Rachel is confident she will represent her country in 2016. Most elite distance runners um, and race walkers don't really hit their prime until they're about 25, 28 years old. And I'm still 20. I'm just starting to crest into my potential. So my coach and I have decided that this is a more, it's more of a learning experience for me. You know, it'll be great if I go out and I get a B standard, but uh, there's many other women in the U.S. that have been training for a much longer time and they've put a lot of work in and London is their time. Rio, Rio's my time. Hillside Family of Agencies is one of the oldest nonprofit human service organizations in western New York. They assisted over 12,000 families in our area last year. As Courtney Tennant reports, there was much more on the line than usual as RIT and the University of Rochester renewed their rivalry on the pitch. Two teams, one great cause. On the 11th anniversary of September 11th, the inaugural Hillside Community Shield brought together the crosstown rivalry of RIT and U of R and Hillside Family Agencies. How did the idea of the Community Shield come about? Well, you know, I'm one of those people who's been in this community for a long time playing soccer. I love the game of soccer. I work at Hillside. I thought about uh, how many families in, in this community just uh, enjoy soccer actually year-round. 
and the germ of an idea came after something that's done in England called the Charity Shield. Originally it was called the Charity Shield, and it was a game to support children's and family charities. So I approached first the coach at the U of R, then your coach, and they were both instantly on board with the idea, and it's gone from there. When you first heard about the event, what was your reaction? Uh, we jumped right on board. We started talking about this 15 months ago, and it was Tom called, and it was there was no hesitation. This was something we needed to do, wanted to do, happy to do it. Uh, we were excited about it to bring um, our programs, particularly soccer front and center, to a community that just loves soccer. It's crazy about the, the sport. Could you talk about your role with Hillside and the people that Hillside actually serve in our community? Hillside has been around, this is our 175th anniversary, so we've evolved from an orphanage way back in 1837 to a multi-service agency that takes care of children and families of, with a variety of emotional and mental health issues. Uh, we also work with kids in the urban uh, school districts who are trying to graduate from high school. We're really a very holistic uh, children and family service agency in all of New York State. What does an event like this mean to your agency? Well, this is really cool. This is great because uh, this matches up uh, a lot of what we believe in at Hillside. So, for instance, we think that uh, our youngsters need to be physically active, uh, that that generates good health. And uh, this kind of event brings out the community. Uh, brings out uh, two organizations that uh, Hillside has been involved with for decades, RIT and the University of Rochester. Brings us all together uh, and generates uh, funds for Hillside that we can use for the activities and serving our children. These are probably the two most competitive men's teams in the area. So you got to go, you got to start with the best and that's what we did. But both your schools, uh, your admi uh, administration, your alumni have just been so good about trying to make this a, a big success for the community and for themselves that we can't fail. Uh, you know, I think this is good. It, you know, Division Three athletics, you know, part of what we're trying to instill in the student athletes is, is service and leadership. And Tom Hildebrandt, the president of uh, Hillside Family Agencies, has pulled this together as a soccer fan for a long time. I, I, I appreciated the fact that our guys got to see that, you know, what, what someone like Tom would do and the impact it can have on the community. Uh, the, the, the fact that all the proceeds from the game are going for a great cause. This is important for our guys to understand. RIT, U of R, it's a rivalry game. Do you think that the game being played on 9-11 has even more meaning? Well, I think it provides us all an opportunity to gather together as a community and to uh, pause and reflect on what that event meant to all of us 11 years ago. Having been in the military myself, I, uh, I feel very strongly about um, and patriotic about this whole thing. And um, you know, it's an opportunity for us to um, celebrate, play, play a game on this date and, um, and then reflect on the great things that this country means. Well, we were really very touched that uh, the inaugural uh, uh, event would actually be on 9-11. Uh, we're so very grateful uh, to those individuals who watch out for us every single day. Hillside has a special role in watching out for the children and families of our community. So uh, that we're here tonight um, honoring the individuals who have watched out for all of us is also very special. The U of R captured the inaugural Community Shield with a 1-0 victory. The event raised over $10,000 for the Hillside family of agencies. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone. Don't forget, we're always on at RITSZ.com. And you can also stay up to date with Sports Zone by following us on Twitter and friending us on Facebook. So until next time, thanks for joining us in the zone.